Good morning and welcome to Morning Trade with Money Control. I'm Karunia Rao and I'm here to help you navigate the trading session with actionable strategies, sectoral trends and most importantly, we will be addressing your queries as well. So let's kick start and take a look at uh, how the global handover has been. As far as Wall Street concerns uh, is concerned, it snapped its four-day losing streak. Stocks open week on hawkish cues from the Bank of Japan but recover to close with modest gains. The Dow Jones leads with gains of about three-tenths of a percent. Stocks in Asia-Pacific recover after a mixed start. The Japanese Nikkei 2 comes off lows to trade with gains. The SGX 50 is also indicating a positive start for the Indian market. European markets largely lower yesterday as investors assess BOJ's interest rate outlook for 2023. With AMC stocks staging a mild rebound, is it the right time to invest? Also in focus, City Union Bank, Sudarshan Chemicals, Jubilant Foodworks and Marathon Next Gen. Okay, let's get going and bring on board our first guest, Kunal Shaw of LKP Securities to talk about the technicals of the market. Hi Kunal, thanks for joining in. How are you reading into the, uh, the, the, the straight setup? Tomorrow is the weekly expiry as well. Um, tell us what to expect. Uh, good morning, Karunia. I think uh, the markets have been quite volatile in the last uh, one week or so, and this volatility is likely to continue going forward as well. Uh, now, specifically, if I talk about yesterday's trading session, we saw some good buying from the lower levels, which is a positive uh, sign for the Indian markets. Now, the overall trade is still in a downtrend where we are uh, trading in a lower high, lower low formations. Uh, but from the current levels, I'm expecting a pullback at least towards the levels of 18,600. So that is a resistance zone where even on the options data, there has been aggressive call writing on the weekly expiry that has been done. So that is a resistance for me on the upside. Uh, currently, we are trading somewhere around 18,400. So probably a 200 points still upside is what I'm expecting uh, from the current levels. So for today's trading session, especially one should keep a buy approach, uh, keep a stop loss of 18,350 on the downside, uh, can expect targets of at least 18,500 to 600 on an intraday perspective, uh, since we are having a gap of opening of almost 70 to 80 points. Uh, similarly, if I talk about the Bank Nifty Index, it has been one of the relative outperforming index. And even in yesterday's trading session, the bulls managed to hold that 43,000 support zone. Uh, that was very crucial, where even put writing was visible in yesterday's trading session. So Bank Nifty might slowly move higher towards the levels of 43,700, 800 on the upside. Again, it faces a multiple resistance on the upside as well. Uh, 44,000 is the call setup. So call writers are quite active at those levels as well. So for me, both the index remains in a buy mode only uh, for today's trading session spe uh, specifically. Expecting a uh, Nifty to go towards 18,600 and Bank Nifty towards 43,700, 800 zone. Okay, all right. Let's also talk about some individual stocks that could be in the news today and it could be in uh, the limelight as far as stock action is concerned. I want to first flag off City Union Bank, Kunal. Uh, they've reported a divergence in NPAs worth uh, 259 crore rupees for FY22. The divergence in provisioning stands at 40 crore rupees again for FY22. Let's talk about City Union Bank. I mean, um, how is it holding out against the rest of the mid-cap uh, peers? And do you think it could be a good bet to sort of uh, have in your portfolio? So, Karun, if I talk about the overall banking space, uh, the banking space uh, did very well uh, in the current year, that is 2022. Uh, nobody was expecting that uh, when the year started. And specifically, if I talk about uh, CUV Bank, it had done relatively good. Uh, compared to the other banks as well. Now, if I talk about the technical charts, uh, the stock is trading in a higher, higher, higher low formations, but there has been some exhaustion at the higher levels. Uh, since the last two to three days, we have seen some selling pressure at higher levels. Even if I talk about the momentum indicator RSI, it has not been able to surpass the level of 60 on the on the up, upper end. So that means clear that there is no such strength in the up move what it had got. We might see some selling pressure going forward on the downside as well. For me, 185 is the level which I'll be watching out for. If that is taken out on a closing basis, expect the stock to go further lower towards the levels of 170, 170 to find off a level. 
So at the current level, my view remains uh, bearish. It's probably in a sell mode. Uh, 185 something which one should keep on your radar. If that is breached, then definitely it's an exit on the plans. Okay, all right. Moving on to the second uh, stock on our list, that's Jubilant Foodworks. Now, Domino's has launched 20-minute delivery service across 14 different Indian cities, uh, 20 zones, if uh, I am to quote their press release. Uh, this will be rolled out without compromising the food quality or safety of the riders. Now, that's something that the management has reiterated. But let's talk about the technicals of a Jubilant food work and how it's likely to play out from here on. Uh, there's a lot of interest in Jubilant, continues to be, and we keep getting a lot of uh, engagement as well as far as this counter goes. So tell us how it's looking. Um, good morning, Karuna. I think, yes, uh, definitely Jubilant food is something which is a retail favorite uh, stock, you can say, uh, where you might be even getting a lot of uh, queries on the same. Uh, now, if I talk on the technical front, uh, the stock had recently given us a a breakdown from the levels of 543. So now what has happened that after the breakdown has come, the stock has been trading in a lower high, lower low formation and it is heading on the lower end only. Uh, so for me, uh, on the technical front, the chart looks bearish. Uh, no need to be aggressive long at the current levels. Uh, for me, I will be long only above the level of 550. So once 550 is surpassed, then we might see a change in trend and then the stock can head towards 600, 625 kind of a level. So from the current levels, I'm not very bullish on the stock. Uh, in fact, we can see some selling pressure on the downside as well towards the levels of 500, 480 as well. So on technicals, it doesn't look very interesting at the current levels. We should wait for that 550 level to take out. Then we might see the strength again uh, in Jubilee Food. Okay, all right. Moving on to stock number three, Sudarshan Chemicals. Uh, yesterday we saw a sharp spike uh, coming by on this counter. Norges Bank, however, has sold 7 lakh worth of shares at an average po uh, price point of 377 rupees a piece. Now tell us where it's headed from these levels. Uh, so, Karun, if I talk about the entire chemical space again, uh, chemical space uh, has been uh, doing very strong since the last four to five years, if I took out the data. And contrary, if I took out Sudarshan Chemicals, the stock had been a massive underperformance in the last one year or so. Uh, from the highs what it had uh, made a year back, around 800 levels, it's trading at 400. So, you can say it has corrected by almost 50% on the downside. Uh, now, uh, what is the uh, chart saying on the technical front? Now it has or entered into an oversold territory uh, where there has been excessive selling which has been done in the last one year. A good base formation is happening on the lower end. Um, the RSI which is in the oversold territory is witnessing a, a turnover and it has again entered into that buy zone of 55-60 on the, on the higher levels. So good base formation on the lower levels, uh, definitely not a candidate to sell at the current levels. Uh, I'm expecting a pullback rally at least towards the levels of 450 on the upside. So currently it is trading at 396, 400 kind of a zone. So probably a 10 to 12 percent move on the upside is what I can expect. Okay, all right. Moving on to the Sorry, final name next. on our list for the day, Marathon Next Gen. Uh, Kunal, were you saying something? Sudarshan chemical to go towards the levels of at least 10 to 12 percent on the upside. So it's definitely in the buy list. Okay, that's very encouraging. Uh, great, moving on to stock then, Marathon Next. Uh, there's been some purchases in their uh, lower property, uh, commercial property, might I add. CDSL has bought office space in this project. We look at this year alone, they have sold commercial space worth more than 400 crores at Marathon Future X. That's the name of the property. They've also launched a commercial tower in Bombay itself, which is called Marathon Millennium. And uh, they also have a plan for commercial tower at Baikala in a joint venture with Adani Realty. Let's talk about Marathon Next Gen. Unfortunately, I mean, we don't have any fundamental analysts tracking the company. But uh, interesting... Um, you know, developments happening there. Again, real estate space is picking up. Many uh, uh, analysts and experts we've spoken to are also quite optimistic about how realty will play out. But this particular counter, per se, Kunal, how is it looking? It's added close to 10% in the last five days. Is that momentum going to continue from here on? Should one buy uh, for some more gains 
from these levels? Uh, see, first of all, if I talk about the entire reality space, I think reality is one space which is very tricky in order to understand whether it's from the fundamental perspective or whether it's from the technical perspective as well. Uh, because there are multiple factors which are involved when you uh, analyze the entire real estate sector. We are seeing a rising interest rate scenario at the current levels uh, where reality sector will have some dent on, the, uh, on, on their margins on a fundamental perspective. Uh, but what does the chart say specifically about the entire reality sector? The reality sector might still consolidate in the near term. Uh, we might not see very significant move on the upside because of the rising interest rate scenario. Uh, but specifically, if I talk about Marathon next year, on the chart, it looks very interesting. Uh, the stock uh, yesterday has given a breakout from a rounding bottom formation. And the breakout was there with volumes, which was very important. Now, a follow-up move is required. So for me, if Marathon uh, crosses yesterday's high, that will be a good trigger for me to initiate on long positions. So the level what I will be watching out on the upside will be 268. So once 268 is taken out on the higher end, we can expect the stock to go at least towards the levels of 300 on the upside. So the chart looks interesting. A good breakout has come in. Now only the follow-up move is required, which will take the stock higher towards the levels of 300. Okay. All right. I uh, request you to stay on with us, Kunal. I want to touch base with uh, the next guest uh, who's waiting by as well, Neha Dave from MC Pro. Neha, hi. Thanks for joining in. Um, we've uh, invited you over today to talk about AMC stocks. Since you watch uh, and closely track BFSI space, I mean, AMC is something that I want to focus on today. There's been a bit of a, uh, a mild reversal of sorts as far as uh, the likes of HDFC, AMC are concerned or even UTI, AMC. But yeah, I mean, if, if we look at the big picture scenario, HDFC, AMC is still a laggard. But let's understand what's happening in this space and despite a good numbers uh, monthly basis from Amphi, from uh, even the market volumes, interest in the markets, why these stocks continue to languish? Thanks, Karunia, for having me. Uh, so as you rightly said, that mutual fund industry is going from strength to strength. Uh, the asset under management of uh, the mutual fund industry has already crossed uh, uh, 40 lakh crore uh, as of November end. And if we see uh, the trend in the flows, you know, last month, that is November, uh, the net inflows into equity schemes were slightly muted. But if we see the long-term trend, that is all the months for, uh, for this calendar year, uh, the inflows into equity schemes has been positive. Uh, net inflows have showed a lot of resilience despite a growing list of concerns, uh, which included uh, heightened volatility in the capital markets at the beginning of the year uh, due to uh, Russia-Ukraine war, uh, global inflationary pressures, reversal of domestic interest rate cycle, and monetary uh, tightening by Fed. Despite all these concerns, the flows in equities have been very healthy and encouraging. Uh, the other aspects uh, of the industry, which is... Uh, which uh, the industry very closely tracks, that is flows through SIP also has been very uh, positive. It stood at more than 13,000 crore as of November end. Uh, so the undercurrents in the industry has been positive. There is rising participation by retail investors, uh, which is indicated by uh, increase in the number of investor folios. Uh, but if we compare uh, the performance of the industry with the performance of the AMC stocks, uh, there is a wide contrast. Uh, though uh, 2022 20, uh, has been a, a spectacular year for mutual fund industry, uh, the AMC stocks have largely underperformed. Now, uh, there could be multiple reasons for the same. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, could be is that this calendar year, we have seen a rising, uh, a very healthy trend or a rising uh, flows into passive uh, schemes. Now, uh, uh, that could be a concern area in the long term for the mutual fund industry because uh, the rising share of passive assets reduces the profitability or impacts the profitability of AMCs. Uh, another reason could be uh, there has been, uh, you know, uh, there are, uh, more, more negative news flows, stock specific in the AMC industry. They, uh, the, the stocks have uh, hogged the limelight for all the wrong reasons and maybe that could be the reason for underperformance. So if you see the performance of AMC stocks, even the newly listed, they all have been, uh, you know, lack, lackluster. Okay. So um, for those of us who uh, have subscribed to MC Pro, I want to just give you a big... Uh, a shout out that today there will be uh, a UTI AMC report that will be released. Uh, 
today and uh, something to keep your eyes out on if you're interested in the AMC pack. But Neha, uh, as a bottom line, what would you recommend or what would you advise investors who have uh, uh, who had invested in the likes of HDFC, AMC at higher price points and who have been making losses for the last um, more than a year, I, I'd say, or almost a year. Should they stay invested and wait for maybe a year or two before, you know, they recover their losses or should they perhaps average or exit? Yes, so HDFC, AMC has been a very expensive stock since the day of its listing. Uh, the premium valuation is one of the reasons why the stock has underperformed. Uh, fundamentally, there is other issue that is HDFC, AMC also has been losing some market share. Uh, so the expensive valuation along with the losing market share, uh, both have resulted into the stock underperforming. Uh, so the investors who have come in uh, at a, during the IPO or later than that, probably uh, for a long term, it's a good hold. But in the near term, uh, one should be very cautious, remain on the sidelines. Uh, uh, because uh, the valuation of HDFC AMC is still very premium compared to its uh, uh, fundamentals. Hmm. But do you have any favorites uh, or is this a space that you guys are still a little cautious on and you will uh, maybe change your stance with the coming months and how they play out, but how are things right now uh, as per your observation? So yeah, so the, the stocks uh, will react to uh, the news, news flows. For instance, uh, UPI AMC uh, has done very well in the last one month. The stock has rallied 24% uh, in the past one month, and that is on the back of the news flow that uh, you know after PNB uh, made a public announcement that um, they have received approval from uh, Depart uh, DIPAM uh, for uh, divesting its stake in uh, UPI AMC. Now PNB holds 15% uh, stake in UPI now. Uh, this has led to some rallies, uh, and UTI AMC again was an underperforming stock. Uh, so investors, what uh, typically uh, you know uh, uh, need to keep a watch on is that uh, any uh, consolidation in the M or MA in the space uh, would be the trigger, uh, you know, for the stocks to read it. Uh, now, uh, very interestingly, uh, uh, if any deal goes through, it has to be compared to the last deal, uh, which. Uh, uh, which was about uh, HSBC taking over LNT mutual fund assets. So, uh, you know, the valuation would, uh, you know, trend to be around that levels. Uh, but as of now, uh, we still remain cautious on the sector as a whole. The valuation of most AMC appears full uh, relative to its fundamentals. Uh, so investors need to be really cautious. Okay, well, thank you so much, Neha, for joining in uh, and sharing your view and your assessment of the AMC space with us. Guys, uh, MC Pro definitely continues to be cautious. We'll have to see how things play out uh, in the coming months. Uh, back to uh, technicals then with Kunal. Um, Kunal, lots of queries lined up for you, so we'll just get on to it right away without much ado. Um, the first talk I want you to address is rights. We have a comment coming in from John and he wants to ask if it's a good time to enter the, the counter. What do you suggest? The, uh, overall, uh, Karuna, if I talk about the entire railway space, uh, they have been doing quite well in the recent times. And I think uh, before the budget, uh, we might see some good rally even in the railway stocks. As well. So from a sort of I have collected a bit and it, is, uh, it has come to an attractive level of buy. So generally 340, 330 has been the zone where the stock has seen some accumulation on the lower end. So I think it's a good level to enter at the uh, current price. Uh, 320 would be a strong support on the downside, which I'm not expecting it to breach. And I can expect at least the stock to go towards the levels of 375 to 390 on the upside. So I think a good level to buy where the risk reward is also favorable. Okay, all right. Uh, the next query is coming in from Vish KL. He wants to know about Gale for the short term. Again, uh, Gale over the last few days and even a month has done well. But if you look at uh, how it's played out for the entire year, it has substantially underperformed many of its PSU peers and many other stocks in the PSU space, which have uh, some of them having logged triple digit gains even. So let's talk about this one for the short term. What would you be suggesting him? So exactly, Karuna, as you pointed out that uh, Gale has not been doing comparatively well uh, compared to its peers here. And uh, definitely on the chart perspective, the same scenario is visible. 
the stock has been trading in a long consolidation range uh, where on the higher end 100 has been a very good resistance for the stock on the higher end and on the lower end 85 has been a support zone so for me even uh, two days back the stock tried to breach that level of 100 but it could not close above that level now again the stock is trying to show some strength in the last one to two days i'll be waiting for that level of 100 to get uh, the stock to surpass that on a closing basis. Once that happens, then we might see the stock at least heading towards the level of 110 to 112 on the upside. So a good 10% kind of a move, what we can see. Uh, 100 has been a multiple resistance zone for the stock. It has reversed from there previously three to four times. So let the stock surpass that level on a closing basis, then the momentum will start to continue on the upside. Okay, all right. Uh, the next uh, query I want you to address is from Satya. They want to know about uh, uh, short to medium term prospects of Webhav Global. Again, uh, slow mover last one month, but still uh, pretty much in the green if we look at the moves. What would be your advice here? How is it looking for the next few months? For Webhav Global, it has seen a very sharp correction in the last one year. Um, the stock was trading in a continuous downtrend with lower high, lower low formations which were intact. Uh, now what has happened in the stock in the month of August 2022, the stock has been had already entered into its over, oversold territory. And post that August buying, what we have seen on the volume perspective, the stock has been trading in a sideways consolidated range. That means it's forming a base at the lower levels. So for me, uh, 359, 360 is a level which I'll be watching out for. Uh, once that is taken out, I can expect a very quick rally on the stock on the upside towards the levels of 400 to 420. So even from the current levels, I think it's a buy uh, since it's trading in an oversold territory. The risk reward ratio is favorable. So one can add at least 50% at the current levels and the other 50% can be added above the level of 359 from where the breakout will come in. Okay, got it. Emanth is asking us, uh, with the current trends in ethanol industry, how is global spirit, global spirits placed, uh, whether to average or hold on at current levels? Now, this one has rebounded quite sharply from its 52-week lows, uh, adding about 19-20% in the last one month. But it's still, uh, you know, in the red pretty much if we look at the big picture. Talk to us about Globus and whether one should indeed uh, average at this level or avoid see uh, definitely if we talk about the ethanol story uh, that has been doing quite well in all the sugar stocks as well now if i specifically talk about global uh, spirit the stock has again seen a very good correction in the last uh, one year or so now uh, the stock is trying to form some base at the lower level uh, definitely not to sell at the current levels if you are already holding it uh, if you want to average it my suggestion to you would be yes definitely because it has corrected a lot and it is at an attractive buying zone as well. So one can definitely add at the current levels and we can expect the stock to go towards the levels of at least 1000 on the upside. So for me, uh, the resistance for the stock on an immediate basis is 940. Once that is taken out, definitely 1000 levels can easily come on the upside. So yes, one can average at the current levels and even if you don't have positions, you can buy new even at the current levels. Okay, that's heartening to know. Well, um, Kunal, how about your own uh, preferred ideas and picks in the market right now? Which stocks are you eyeing? See, I think overall, as I told, I'm expecting at least a 200 points rally on the Nifty on the upside uh, from the current levels. Uh, the view is bullish. Uh, so for me, my first pick from the, uh, from the Nifty 50 space uh, would be the heavyweight Reliance Industries. Uh, the stock in yesterday's trading session has given a very good uh, base formation and lower base buying what we have seen in the stock. Uh, the stock has uh, seen a, a corrective, time corrective decline and now the up move is ready for the stock on the upside towards the levels of 2700 to 2770 on the upside. Uh, so I think a good risk to reward ratio at the current levels as well. Uh, 2600 is where the stock is currently trading. Uh, 2500 is the base from where it is seeing bounces uh, from the lower levels. So a good 100 to 150 points rally what we can see from the upside from the current levels in Reliance. So Reliance will be my first uh, buy pick uh, for this up move of 200 points what I'm expecting. Reliance could be the leader in this one. So that will be the first pick on my end. The second pick would be from the railway packs. As we talked in the show as well, 
uh, that railways are going to see some good attraction going forward as well and there have been good valuation in terms as well as on the technical front the railway stocks are doing quite well so my topic in that space would be ircon so ircon international uh, the chart looks very interesting uh, the stock even in the correction what we got recently in nifty the stock was just consolidating in a sideways range yesterday we saw some good buying a uh, volume based buying in the stock and it surpassed the critical resistance of 64 63 on the uh, on the higher end so now the stock is ready to again uh, continue the momentum on the upside towards the levels of 69 71 is what i am expecting so from the current levels if i see i think again a more 8 to 10% kind of move on the upside what i am expecting the lower end base is seen at 61 from where multiple buying has been seen as well so i think again a very good uh, theme that is a railway theme what you can play out and aircon international would be my top pick from that okay all right so not only uh, is rights uh, the right bet but also aircon something that uh, Kunal likes from the railways engineering space along with Reliance. Thank you so much, Kunal, once again for joining in and for sharing your picks, your view on the market, and a host of stocks with us and our viewers. With that, it's a wrap on our morning trade. Thank you so much for tuning in.